are actually going to head on to a live demo. So a couple of my teammates will hopefully be able to send you through a Dropbox link for you to download some of these assets. But a quick overview of the assets that I'm gonna be providing you before we drop on to kind of like doing this demo. So firstly, we're gonna be making an in-app for onboarding. And as we can see here, our in-app begins with regards to trying to find someone the perfect time, like having that, like why are we here and having your user value proposition on your first card. And then we're going to go through and we're going to ask the users some basic questions. So what are they looking for and for how many people? And I've been able to actually provide you assets in two forms, both a slightly like lighter kind of like light pink and purple mode, as well as this slightly like nicer, darker theme in case your, your branding is like, I guess, a more mature kind of like dark theme branded. And a couple of the assets that we provide is, of course, we've got some backgrounds, we've got our clothes button, our main image, as well as these colors as well. So I'll make sure that we come back to these specific colors when you need them. And then finally, also some button images as well, as we can see here, hence that hack that I was telling you all about earlier on. So let's just head over. So firstly, we're going to go into our dashboard and we're going to go into the OneSignal application. So I'll give everyone a quick moment to make sure you get your OneSignal application up and ready to load. Okay, so hopefully you've got OneSignal up now loaded, you're logged in. So the first thing I'd love to introduce you to is actually a pretty new kind of like swanky new feature of ours that we have just released this week. So now what you can do is, is you can actually press Command and K if you're on a Mac, or you can press your Windows key and K if you're on a Windows. And what you'll notice here is we've got this beautiful search mode will come up. Now this is a really great way to navigate amongst the dashboard in a very quick manner. And it also allows you to move across the dashboard in really a shortcut manner too. And really here we care about your productivity and we care about you being able to do things in a very quick kind of like precise manner because we understand a lot of you may have like lots and lots of notifications going on and being sent out every single day. So this is a quick way of us being able to move across the dashboard itself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna press my down and I'm gonna say, okay, I want a new in-app message. So let's just give it some time and you can see there it's pretty instant in terms of how it's loading up that new in-app message. So as we can see, we've got our lovely in-app message and we're gonna begin actually with a message name. Now we introduced a message name across both in-app, push, and I believe SMS as well, because we really wanna make sure that you have an internal facing way to discuss and to talk about your product. So here I'm going to say webinar, and you can see that it's already coming up and I'm gonna say live. And this is gonna be the one that I'm creating today. Now the second thing I want to be doing is I want to be selecting from my message type. So actually let's go and let's default that to full. And let's also additionally create a carousel. That's something which I'm really keen on us doing because we, we want to really show through our onboarding sequence. So the first thing we've kind of got is our heading. So I am going to be a little bit sneaky because I have got some content already on the side and I'm going to copy and paste in my content, which is lovely. So firstly, I've got let's find the perfect home for you. I'm going to set my font and actually I really love Inter, so I'm going to be using Inter here. And let's just make that a little bit bigger because I feel like that's a little bit small. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down and I'm going to skip and I'm going to open up my background block because I'm particularly eager in terms of like background colors. And this is where your in-app really comes to life. And let me just add my background block there, which is lovely. Oh, there we go. And uh, let's just open that up. There we go. We can see. And wow, like it's already making a difference by having a linear gradient. And for those of you who are interested on the design front, you can actually use Figma and you can just make like a very quick kind of like linear gradient that exists here. And all I do is, is I basically export these images to a PNG and then I am able to upload those. So now what I can do once I have my particular background is it's like my, my text really isn't showing up. So I'm going to begin off and I'm going to actually, let me go in and let me use the color picker instead because that's much easier to be honest. Okay, great. Like I can see here that I've really, I've brought that to life and actually it's now kind of like standing up, which is lovely. 
Now, the second thing I actually want to do by default is, is I, I don't really like this default image. So I really want to be able to kind of like add that, add and customize that illustration. So again, I've got a beautiful little illustration. You can see here my uploader. It kind of blends in just because it's a very nice, beautiful white illustration that I'm going to be using. Oh, and this is this is so far looking perfect. The next thing I want to do is I want to actually grab and I'm going to grab and cheat again because I've got a lovely uh, color already to go for my button. And there we go. I'm going to add that into my button. Lovely. Now, a great thing that we can do here with actually the radius right now, it, it's four pixels. So this is something where, again, branding really comes in. I don't really like the four pixels. It's a little bit too subtle for me. So actually, I'm going to try really ramping it up. And we can begin to see they're very subtly. The colors aren't quite good on my, on my computer due to the sunlight. But I can see there that it is showing up kind of like the radius. And I'm actually going to ramp this up. And I'm going to do something as crazy as 40. And 40, I can see that I get a beautiful kind of curve here. So that's great. Now, what I also realized here is, is I, I need to really add, I guess, some kind of like padding and margin to the bottom because it's kind of going into that, like, as we can see here, the, the swipe click as it may be here. So I, I don't quite like it close to the bottom. So I'm just going to ramp that up. Let's try that at 50. Oh, perfect. OK, that's good. Now, a couple of other things that you can see here is, is like we've got a drop shadow, but we haven't like specified a particular X and Y. And our drop shadow really enables you to say the angle of the drop shadow itself. So how many pixels should that be X? How many pixels should that be Y? So I'm just going to do something by default. and I'm going to add that as four. I'm going to make my drop shadow. I'm going to do that as a black down here. And actually in my alpha, I'm going to make that 25. And really what this alpha is doing here is here you've got your red, your green, your blue, and then your alpha, which is your fourth, is basically your opacity, your transparency. So I'm going to just do that very quickly. And then I think I'm done with my first card. So on a matter of time, because this is meant to be a quick half an hour, everyone, um, I'm going to move on to my second card, which is lovely. So let's go on to my second card. And I'm going to say, what are you looking for? And this is my complicated card. And I'm going to add a background as well. Beautiful. So I have now added my background, which is like lovely. And again, if you if you already collect, if you already um, have your card ready and you click through, a really great advantage of our editor is that it actually copies the content as you're creating a new card too. So I was a bit bad because I didn't quite do that, but these things happen. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now is we've now got our first button and actually I'm going to start adding my buttons in. So I'm going to actually I'm not even going to use a button. What am I doing? I'm going to get rid of my button completely. And the good trick that I've learned is is to add an image block. And as I add my image block, I'm going to choose my file and I'm going to specify, OK, I want my condo. Lovely. I'm going to upload that and we begin to see my buttons are becoming in use. I'm going to clone those multiple times. So I've got three and I'm just going to upload some different buttons. So we've got my condo. I'm going to have my lovely apartment. So let's see. There we go. And we can see that that one's an apartment share. And then let's add another one. And let's add a condo. Oh, I already added the condo, everyone, didn't I? Got to remember what you add, Ruby, because otherwise you're just going to keep on adding the same image. Let me do like a room only. So really right now we've got great buttons. So we've got four in total. I'm just going to delete one because we don't really want that condo coming up twice. So what are you looking for? A condo, an apartment, share a room, a room only, let's say. Now what you'll notice is, is the kind of like the spacing here isn't quite right. So firstly, I'm going to check and I'm going to make sure that everything is spaced correctly, which it is, which is like lovely. And actually, I'm going to do something which is like a very sneaky, like little trick of mine. 
And I'm going to add something which is like known as like an empty image. And you'll have this as well from the Dropbox. And I will be able to, are my empty images not here? Ah, oh, there you go, it is empty. So there's a really great trick that you can do, particularly when you want kind of like padders and blockers and you just wanna shift something down just slightly. And you can upload basically empty PNGs. And as we can see here, I've now got an empty PNG. It kind of like makes the spacing really big amongst those buttons. So actually I'm just gonna get my particular block and I'm just gonna drag it up. There we go. And I'm also gonna clone this image block and I'm just gonna drag that one to the bottom too. So there we go. And we can see then that now my spacing is actually looking pretty damn good. So that, that's nice to know. So this is really how you're kind of creating and crafting your in-app messages to be kind of like very branded based. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have time to get through to the other cards uh, today. Um, unfortunately, I'm obviously not very good with timing everyone. I, I had too many ambitious kind of cards that I wanted to be making. But um, hopefully that gives you kind of like a feeling in terms of some of the functionality that you can really be doing with regards to in-app. So being able to customize, add your own fonts, being able to create those kind of like images as buttons. And of course, more importantly, we can actually add these click actions. So for example, you can collect what people have clicked on based on a particular URL and feed that back to your API. But hopefully that's a good introduction to really get you very used to and very kind of like familiar with regards to in-app and branding. Now, what I do want to get onto is a little surprise is, is I wanted to announce some of the features that are really coming soon to OneSignal. So this is currently within the works, but we're hoping to release shortly the ability to really be able to preview your in-app messages within a landscape mode. So that's the first particular feature. So we understand that some of you may uh, state your orientation of your application to be portrait or landscape. So this really allows you to ensure that your in-app is working and it, it become suitable within that particular mode itself. And then the second thing that we're also introducing is really the ability to have a full screen in-app message. And really here we're wanting to allow you to really optimize your screen space and to make sure that your in-app is a more dominant part of your user experience. And you'll be able to actually toggle on and off your full screen mode within your in-app itself. But that is all for now. I think we have all, oh, we have one minute left for a quick question. I'm just gonna see if I have any. And it doesn't look like I have any, but it's been wonderful to really be doing this webinar. I hope you've certainly found it all useful and join us again soon. Um, feel free to reach out to us at the product team. Uh, we're more than happy to answer your questions and really be able to help you make your in-apps more successful.